Can we put our hands together for the Lord? Let's celebrate His faithfulness. Zechariah chapter 4, verse number 6 says, It's not by power, it's not by might, but what? By my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. So we give glory to God for bringing us by His grace into the month of February. And I pray that as we move along, by His grace in this month, it shall be your month of favor. It shall be your month of blessing. It shall be your month of breakthroughs. It shall be your month of joy and your month of fulfillment. In the name of Jesus. One more time, let's put our hands together for the Lord. Let's celebrate. We give glory to God as we come to the month of February. By His grace and by His power. Is moving us, moving us on, moving us ahead, uh, moving us step by step, state by stage, day by day, to the fulfillment of our destiny. I pray this year, even this month, uh, will be the beginning of your fulfillment. Can I hear somebody? Choir, I'm not hearing you at the back here. That's more like it. Hallelujah. The church service, everyone is a participant, and God receives all our worship and praises. So we all need to be actively involved in spirit and in truth, participating in every aspect of the fellowship. Hallelujah. Can I hear a sounding amen, please, sir? Yeah, significance of circumcision. A theme for the year 2000 and 18 is superlative turnaround a year of superlative turnaround and as a church a Smolete Baptist Church we are celebrating uh, 55 years of superlative turnaround from uh, grass to grace from a mustard seed to an oak from a little and humble beginning from everyday people to VIPs in Smolete Baptist Church so we have every reason to celebrate his faithfulness in this church and even this year. So, um, we are in celebration and we are celebrating throughout this year. We've had, uh, we have mapped out several programs and activities to, to do just that, to celebrate. On the 18th of this month, we'll be having a Valentine's service, love service. So, we are going to be in touch of red all over the place and we'll have our emphasis on family, love and life. And um, that would have been after the 14th of, uh, of February. So many activities and programs are uh, coming on. And then afterwards we have celebration of Easter. There will be Easter cantata. And then in May we we'll have family, a family week and the middle of the year. It's going to be a wonderful year this year. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. It's a year of celebration for Little Baptist Church Ibadan at 55. We really do give glory to God that this is happening in our own time by his grace divine shall we pray together father lord we are grateful unto you for this day lord we celebrate your faithfulness thank you in the last 55 years in Molite baptist church the seed that was sown even 58 years ago it came to fruition 55 years we look back with gratitude to all that you have done and we say lord it can only be you. The glory, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for everyone in the house. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, every child. Thank you for all our daddies, all our mommies, all our grandpas in the house. Thank you, Father, Lord God Almighty, for the challenges of the weeks past, which by your grace divine we've been able to overcome. And thank you for the gift of life and the grace uh, of loving you which has brought us before your presence to worship you in spirit and in truth how we pray that even now lord you open our hearts to receive our ears to hear and our heart to conceive your word the lord god almighty will bring transformation head to toe and lord god renew our commitment to you and sanctify and consecrate us for your service lord god almighty steer us up to love you more, even this year, to experience your presence, your power in every area of our life, individually, collectively, 
as family and as an organization even as a living organism your church do this for us this day and let there be a testimony of superlative turnaround in every life today and always in the name of jesus christ the glory of holy father for we pray with thanksgiving in jesus name amen somebody louder amen someone genesis chapter 17 verse 9 to 14 i need you to please open your bible and uh, we maintain a open bible through this session and enjoy the grace of uh, exposition and a bit of uh, academic exegesis at the earliest part and then we go into digging deep exposition and then we come to a conclusion the golden text is genesis chapter 17 verse number 13 as a golden text for um, today it says he that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised they must of necessity be circumcised and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant so we are looking at um, uh, God's demand for his presence with Adam, Abraham and his generation and his demand for his presence even now so we are looking at dispensational a covenant the past and the present and of course that will prepare us for the future the parallel reading is in Genesis chapter 17 verse 9 to 14 I want to put emphasis on verse 12 and he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you every man child in your generations he that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger which is not of thy seed. The most important thing is that the emphasis there is that everyone, every male child in the house must be circumcised. That was the whole dispensation. Even so, biblically, only the men, the boys, the male child must be circumcised. There is no, none, there was never a provision for female circumcision in the Bible. It was um, cultural, barbaric and wicked. But the significance of the circumcision that we are talking about this morning is that of a relationship between God and his, and his people. And I need for us to understand that concept as it applies to superlative turnaround. Don't forget that in Joshua chapter 5 verse number 9 that was the condition that God gave the children of Israel before they can begin to enjoy God's promises, before they can enter into fulfillment, before they can begin to eat from the best of the fruits of the land, before they can assert themselves on the inheritance and the heritage of their fathers. Don't forget that either two, God has promised that at a particular time in the fourth generation he was going to release the children of Israel from bondage uh, according to the Bible writers they revealed to us that it took 430 years it exceeded 30 years that God had declared unto Abraham in the day they were entering into that pact now when the time has come they were not going to possess the land that very easily they are going to suffer for it. They are going to work for it. In fact, a whole generation that left Egypt had to die. They perished in the wilderness, Kadesh Barnea, for 40 years where they were wandering. Unfortunately, they worried conscious that as he was feeding them with manna, as he was feeding them with quails that were coming down from heaven, as God was anointing the weather, to make it so clement and conducive for their existence. Their sandals not torn, their clothings not worn. The Bible makes sure that God said, enjoy yourself. So they were giving out their daughters in marriage, their sons were getting married. They were 
procreating, they were reproducing, of course, to fulfill God's own eternal primordial covenant to replenish, to fill the earth, to continue to breed, and to serve that God's purpose. But they were dying one after the other. The Bible says, until the very last man standing, except only two that were to lead the people into the promised land. Now look at it. On the hill of Gilgal, which the theologians will refer to as the hill of the first skin, the hill of the first skin, God said to them, Joshua, you go and take a stone. By the way, um, we had a, a hard time um, during the week, I, I gave the pastors uh, uh, the assignment to tell me, to research into the significance of the stone. Why didn't God ask Joshua to use a knife that is made of iron? Of course, as at the time, they understand the usage of iron. They have an understanding of the usage of knife. They have an understanding of the usage of uh, some light equipment like chariots which you know drives the horses why not iron why stone they struggle with it they didn't get it now next sunday we are going to look at why stone and why not iron that will be the assignment i refuse to decode it for them i ask them to keep keep searching keep looking for it now circumcision became the only condition if they can enjoy or if they will enjoy the promise which their fathers never entered into. Many people have died. Many generations have gone. Some have been wasted. There comes a generation that must enter into their harvest, that will enter into their future. Listen very well. That will enter into their fulfillment. That which their fathers, their grandfathers, their great grandfathers never enjoyed. A particular generation was going to enjoy it as if there was never a problem. They never suffered. As if there was never a time of servitude. Listen, as if there was never a time of enslavement. That is, a desire to put an end to nostalgia, nostalgic feelings of things they missed in Egypt. He doesn't want to take them back there where they'll begin to lament oh, how we wish that we were in the times past when we were in Egypt even though we were slaves, we were in enslavement, we were working too hard and eating little yet we were okay. God was about to bring an end to their hunger and desire for cucumber that came from the rivers of Nile. How would God do that? God said, okay, the covenant which I entered into with Abraham, which has become the symbol of my presence throughout your lineage, listen, these ones who are going into the promised land have not been circumcised. Therefore, they need must be circumcised before they can enter into that harvest. Is somebody in the house? Hello? Is somebody in the house? What does that mean? It means a lot for us this morning. Circumcision. You can see at the back of your bulletin in the summary, you see the Hebrew, uh, Hebrew word for, for circumcision. You see the Greek word for, for circumcision and you know what that means. A sign of God's covenant with Abraham for every male child in Abraham's family. Now, the Bible now enlarged it. It said, not only the children that come through your loins, but every child that is in your house. By implication, everyone that will come into that relationship with the God of Abraham. Of course, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ at the latter New Testament era is going to change from the circumcision of the first skin to the circumcision of the earth. He said, and I will put my word 
in their hearts and they will know me and they will love me they will appreciate me and they will respect me as the god of love and god of grace i pray this month this week you will love the lord and the lord will love you because he says if you be my people i will be your god hallelujah so it becomes the condition circumcision becomes the condition for the fulfillment of God's word to the generation of Abraham and his seed and becomes an obligation and duty on his part to fulfill that pact of the covenant which is circumcision so it was a condition for receiving the blessings of God and of course you know even Abraham in his old age was circumcised before the birth of Isaac the significance therefore was the fact that God's covenant will be in his flesh he will feel it he will know it and by that sign you understand in verse 13 of chapter 17 not just for him but also for his descendants for which reason God said he will establish his covenant with them those who are born now and those that will be born in the future the way it therefore becomes a sign of national identity for the seed of Abraham and for their generation now in Exodus chapter 4 verse number 26 the Bible says Pharaoh allowed the children of Israel to go but Moses had problem with his own children and Zipporah his wife had to intervene now he led the people out but he did not remember to circumcise his own son and became a problem he kicked against it and the plague of God was coming thank God Zipporah came to the rescue and circumcised her sons now because it's a promise for everlasting relationship with God I pray this morning that your relationship with God will not be broken can I hear a resounding amen because God cares about our relationship with him and that was the reason why in Gilgal it makes it a precondition for them to enjoy the promise of yesteryears turn your Bibles with me to Joshua chapter 5 verse number 4 hallelujah Joshua 5 4 and this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise all the people that came out of Egypt that were males even all the men of war they did what they did what died in the wilderness by the way after they came out of Egypt all not even a single exception except for Joshua and for Caleb therefore God intended that a new order of people a new generation that will love and serve him and even in the Mosaic law circumcision was equally integrated Bible says in John 7 22 Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision not because it is of Moses but of the fathers and ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man now it becomes a part of their life now let's 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 begin to bring it up since we now have understanding of what circumcision is by the way the neighboring countries that surrounded Israel don't circumcise and even now you know it, it has become a product of culture however God makes this a condition for enjoying in the Old Testament two things circumcision Passover none of the two was practiced by the children of Israel in Kadesh Barnea for 40 years now we will see from next week how by entering to the circumcision the, that covenant they began to observe the Passover because everything has changed 
guess what they began to experience? Superlative turnaround. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. And that is what you will experience this year. I cannot hear that. This year you will experience superlative turnaround. In the name of the resurrected Jesus. Now, it did not restrict the covenant to the seed of Abraham, but to everyone in their generation. Now, but physical circumcision is going to cease at a later time. And that is why the heathen nations were referred to as uncircumcised, uncircumcised nations or uncircumcised countries. The most interesting of all of it was Goliath of Gath. How many of us remember Goliath of Gath? If you remember Goliath, say yes. Yes. So who killed Goliath? Hello. Are you here? Who killed Goliath? All right. At the time when David killed Goliath, who was the king in Israel? Hello. Oh, you know Bible. Put your hands together for yourself. You know the Bible. Clap your hands now. All right. Now, the word that David used for Goliath, he said, I will feed your bodies to the parts of the air. You uncircumcised Philistine. Now, at that instant, he invoked the authority, the potency, the power, the efficacy of that covenant of circumcision. In a way, he was now evoking a relationship that the house of Israel had with God, which he believed no other nation enjoyed. He said, I will, you uncircumcised Philistine, now feed your bodies to the boss of the earth. He knew that God will always keep his part of the covenant. Of course, the rest is history. The rest is story. So, circumcision became a norm or a normative for their relationship with God at that generation and the condition for which they will enjoy the promises of God to inherit the land and to eat the best of it. This year in the name of Jesus, as the Lord live it, you will eat the best of this country. It does not matter what is happening around us. We don't really have any news. Nowadays, the news we have is that of uh, the headsmen, you know, killing and politicians doing their gymnastics all over through open letters, closed letters, and flying letters. It does not matter. What matters is that this year, you will experience superlative turnaround in the name of the resurrected Jesus because we have a God. We have a God. We have a Father. We have a God who is mighty and great. Who is Jehovah Jireh, the great provider. This year, the Lord will provide for you. He will provide for your household. In the name of Jesus. Now, the New Testament now changed the term of circumcision. Not again as of the circumcision of the first skin. Or a circumcision of the foreskin as a legitimacy for identity. No, he changed it to the circumcision of our hearts. In essence, the New Testament dispensation seeks a relationship that is born out of a conscious, conscious confession of faith and conscious determination to have. A relationship with God. I doubt relationship. That each and every one of us we we choose Jesus. Each and every one will accept Jesus. Each and every one will receive Jesus. Each and every one will be determined to make him our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer, and our Master, and our God, and our all in all. And the discourse between the woman of Samaria and Jesus suffice. The woman was uh, agitated about the well. That so this well is a well bequeathed to us by our fathers. This is the well of Jacob. And we have been drinking from the fountain of this well 
over the years and generations. Jesus said, very well, I know that. You have a good sense of history. You are fantastic. I clap for you. He said, but you see, there is another well outside of this. The well of life. Anyone I take from that fountain and I give to drink is going to turn and become a fountain from within the inside of the individual and he will not cast again. Now, somebody who has been holding on to heritage and tradition left that, dropped it and said, Hey! You know women, are you sure? I said, yes, no. I said, ah, hey, give me that one. Now, at a point, she let go of what she was holding on to and embraced the grace of transformation which comes from Jesus Christ. That moment, the story of our life changed. There's somebody in the house this morning, the story of your life is changing. The story of your life is going to change. So what have you been holding on to? What tradition have you been holding on to? What heritage have you been holding on to? What is it that is holding you back? Tradition kills, revelation saves. What is it that you are holding on to? That is dragging you back to the past, frustrating you. What is that setback? I believe it can become a stepping stone if you will just hand it off to Jesus Christ and let him have it and let him give you a new wine, a new fountain, fountain of life which, you know, leads unto eternity. That fountain which never dries and which quenches thirst ultimately having Jesus Christ in the inside of you. Are you here? Are you here? Are you here somebody? Now, the dispensation changes. We are no longer in the era of Joshua. Neither are we in the era of Caleb. But we are in the era of a new generation. Hallelujah. Now, the era of Jesus Christ, the era of John the Baptist, the era of the Apostles, the era of the Bible. No longer the era of the past. No, but a new order, a new generation where God desires to have a relationship with us through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. So, circumcision had to change. Concentration on the first skin had to give way to concentration on your heart. So by heart we receive. Amen? Amen? Children, amen? amen? By heart we receive. By heart we conceive. By heart we are inspired. By heart we resolve and take a decision. By heart we step into the covenant of everlasting grace and blessing to enjoy our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through worship we interact with him through the preaching of the word the teaching of the word through the sharing evangelizing we relate with him we, we, we share that grace an opportunity of our transformation with others in fact we eat the best of the land because we believe in him who owns everything the Lord of life the author and the giver of life we hold on to him we can pray unto him sometimes we can even cry until we can lean on his shoulder we can say Abba father because the bible says we do not have an high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities no we are no longer to embrace that mountain which evokes fire smoke and thunder no but we are privilege to approach the Mount of Calvary where the blood of Jesus Christ speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Are you in the house? There's a difference between the two. Between the Mount of Horeb or the Mount of Moses. The Mount of Sinai which thunders and quakes with noise and smokes. The Bible says those who saw it pleaded never to experience such again. But we have come to the Lamb of God. We have come to the church of the firstborn. We are privileged to be circumcised in our heart when we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and our Savior. So you want to experience quality of turn around. There must be a 360 degree shift turning around indeed from the past into the present. Like we said in our first month of this year, January, it is not a crime, it's not a sin to have fumbled 
in the last year. But it's a new year. The essence of changing the new year is an opportunity to begin again. Yes, even last month you fumbled. Fine. But this is a new month. You have a new grace. The Bible says grace abounds even in the light of sin. That you can come back. The door to his presence is never shut at anyone that repents genuinely and come back freely to say, Habba, Father. Are you in the house? Are you in the house this morning? So where have you fumbled? What have you done wrong? Your relationship with your spouse at home, with your children at home. The Bible says don't provoke your children. We take that for granted. The book of Ephesians, sometimes we provoke our children. I tell you, it's not out of place for a father to look at his son or his daughter and say, you know what? I, I think I missed it. I am sorry. Now, it is not out of place. It amounts to arrogance for a child to offend the parents and not say, Daddy, Mommy, please forgive me. I am sorry. Listen, it amounts to sheer arrogance for a husband to hurt his wife and still be claiming that he's the husband. I'm the man in this house. Whatever I do as finality of the law, I am an unquestionable authority. Who are you? Who are you? You, that ordinary malaria, ordinary mosquito. One mosquito will strain to your net and give you a simple bite. In three days from now, you'll be shaking. You'll be shaking and shivering and having rigor on your bed. And it's that same woman that will be running elter skater looking for pepper soup and paracetamol to keep you warm. Hello? Yes or no? So, what is it to say, oh, I think I snapped. I am sorry. Could you just forgive me? I think on that note, I err. Uh, you are right. You are right. And then for the woman to also, you know, fumble and say, oh my goodness, I did not mean it. I don't even know what got over me. I knew what got over you. You had a swing, right? Now when a woman had a swing, anything can happen. Because a woman's heart is like a pendulum. The Bible says, treat them, relate with them as unto a weaker vessel. Why? Because they swing and swing and swing. So that was what happened. You cannot help it. That is your nature. So just tell him, oh, I didn't know. I'm sorry. And the Bible says, men, deal with them with right mind. So you ought to know when the mood is swinging. Are you in the house? Superlative. Turn around. And just shift. Tell your neighbor, change your style. Say it out. One more time. That old style, not the work again. Power, don't they change hand? No, be so. Power, don't they change hand? Change your style. That's a old fashioned, old school. Change your style. Do something new. Lifestyle, better way to relate. Make your home a heaven. When you go out, nobody cares about where you are. But when you come to your house, you feel safe and secured. In the hierarchy of needs by Abraham Maslow, don't forget that one major part of it is esteem. Esteem. The moment you puncture the esteem, you blow it. Your daughter finished dressing for church on Sunday morning and come knocking on your door and say, Daddy, how do I look? I say, wow, angel. You make a day. And on Monday morning, your wife finished dressing. I say, sweetheart, how do I say? My goodness. You look so terrible. That Did you say, huh? Haven't you seen that before? Had that before? <laughs> what is this? What did you put on your head? Woman? See, this is color. You finish the woman for the whole week. Change your... Superlative turn around. The essence of circumcision is that we will have a relationship with God and translate that relationship into one another to each other therefore you become my brother become my sister even your spouse is your brother why not abraham took his wife sarah to egypt and the bible says they desired her what a pretty woman and they asked him hey young man is this your sister or your wife what did you say what did you say no i was afraid of his life and he put himself in trouble said, she's my sister by the way is she not a sister? Those times they married their sisters. 
unbelievable. But that was the history. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need a change of heart. Circumcise your heart. Excise your heart with hot iron. Let the Spirit of Christ dwell in you richly. That you may understand the eye, the depth, the length, the breadth. That's what Ephesians says of the love of God. And you can apply it to your life. And live a life of fulfillment and be a better person. This is the threshing floor. This is the vine press. This is the right place to do the, just that. And I pray that the spirit of circumcision will possess you this morning. The spirit of Christ will enter into you. And you will open up your heart unto the Lord and receive his grace of blessing. And be purified and be purged and be sanctified and be consecrated and be set apart as a vessel of honor in a large house. Yes, there will be hundreds of thousands of people that you relate with every day, everywhere. But you are different. Hallelujah. Superlative turnaround. Close your eyes with me and give thanks to God. Go and read the rest and meditate on it. Ask the Lord for His grace. To be a sanctified and consecrated person to serve his divine purpose. Ask the Lord, help me. Help me, Lord, you can help me. Yes, I have my heart circumcised. I need you to help me. Help me, Lord. That's what Jesus desires to do in you. All you've got to open up your heart and ask him to come. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Let's sing that song together. Into my heart. We go. Into my heart. Everybody. Into to my heart come into my heart softly Lord Jesus come in today come in to stay to stay come in come in to my heart Lord Jesus Ask the Lord this morning to come into your heart Ask him to come He says behold I stand at the door and knock Listen the children of Israel cannot possess the land They can't take it over They cannot enjoy anything there They must first of all meet the condition of circumcision there is a law that God has laid in store for us, but we have to come into a relationship. This is the day of salvation. In Joel chapter 3, the Bible says, Multitude, multitude in the valley of decision. The day of the Lord is at hand in the valley of decision. This is that day. Just, just ask the Lord. This is a new season, a new month. Things must be different. Someone will say, I, 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 am, I am myself, I hold myself. You don't hold nothing. You are God's property. You are very special to Him. And He cares about you. You can make amends and make things right. The Bible says, everything Abraham does was imputed unto righteousness. Because he trusts God explicitly. He never hold back anything from God. Therefore, God... Impose righteousness on him. The Bible says, Our righteousness is but like filthy rags. Filthy rags. Why don't you ask the Lord this morning, Break through me, break me through, pass through. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. Yeah. Why on others you are calling? Why on others 
thou art called. Do not pass me by. the Lord for doing it for you. Thank him. Promise him you will take a step. You will do something. Promise him this morning. Just promise the Lord. Lord, I'm going to do something new. I'm going to do something better. I'm going to take a step of faith. And Lord, make things right. Yes, I will do it. Help me, O oh Lord. Thank you, Father. You are faithful. Wonderful, circumcise our hearts to fit for a home, a throne for you, and a place for your habitation. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone say, Resounding Amen.